Sunday in Advent. The service today is going to be a little bit shorter than normal, and so you can get that coffee or get those cinnamon rolls ready, and we'll be over. You're listening to a live broadcast from Lutheran World Church in Pierre, corner of Nickel and Prospect, just west of the state capitol building. That's the big building in town with the little red light, not to be confused with the grain bin. The ministers at Lutheran World are Pastor Craig Wexler and Deacon Chris Wolman. Special music? We don't have any. Oh. And today's organist is Lori Kennecke. Hymn in this, this morning are 240, 257, 272, 267. Our worship service is about to begin. And our opening hymn will be Light One Candle to Watch for the Messiah, number 240 in the ELW. Good morning. Happy fourth Sunday of Advent. We are here. Our acolytes will be coming down as they join me. We're going to light all four blue candles on the wreath today. If there are any other children here or any grown-ups, you are always welcome, you big people. We're going to bring in the light one more time. Tammy is in the back. We're going to bring in jar candles during our gathering hymn. So this is a good time to get up and go don't join Tammy in the back. That will be great. Good morning, Acolytes. We are just about ready for you. We have just a few announcements. Today, right after worship, 10.30, we are going to be gathering at Parkwood for a ceremony of lighting the Advent wreath. We're going to sing Christmas carols and have communion. So if any of you can join us there as worship missionaries, that would be greatly appreciated. Come, come, come. Get in your cars. Let's join the folks there and celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent with them. That would be great. Coming up in two days, friends, it's Christmas Eve. So we're going to come and have worship together. We have four worship services. They are all going to have traditional elements. All of them will be the same. Four, six, eight, and 11. We will have carols. We'll hear the good word from Pastor Craig. We are going to have candlelight and communion. So please come to the worship that works best in your schedule. Next weekend, we have a worship of lessons and carols, both at 5.30 on Saturday and 9 o'clock in the morning. So come back. We will have worship again together. So let us begin with the lighting of our Advent wreath and the litany. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. In your son, Emmanuel, you have shown us your light and saved us from the power of sin. Bless us as we light the four candles of this wreath. Increase our longing for your presence, that at the celebration of your son's birth, his spirit might dwell anew in our midst. 
for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Thank you. Let us stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the parent who rouses us from slumber, the shepherd who gathers us on the holy mountain, the deliverer who sets us free. Amen. Let us come before the living God in confession. As we wait and watch for the promised day of salvation, we open our hearts to you, O God. Search us and know us. Reveal all that we keep inside. To you, O God, we confess our sins, known and unknown. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us in your ways of justice and peace. Make us reflections of the radiant love of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved children of the Most High, you are gathered before the righteous judge who has mercy on all. Splash exuberantly in the waters of baptism where sin is washed away in the river of life. Dwell peacefully in the loving arms of the one who nurtures all creation. Go boldly in the assurance that your sins are forgiven in the name of the one who is coming and is already here. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn, Light One Candle to Watch for Messiah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God and peace to God. 
God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. in the highest glory to god glory to god and peace to god's people on earth lord god jesus christ holy son of the father lord god lamb of god who take away the seed of the world have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God. God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. And peace to God's people on The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O God, Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Children are invited up for the children's sermon. Anyone who's little, you can bring certainly someone with you. Pastor Craig, I need your help. Could we move that manger right here? Come on up, kids. Come on. Let's have you sit right here. Oh, come, come. Oh, she is so safe. Come, come. Anyone else is welcome to come, too. All right, stand up. Take a look. Take a look. You know, we call Jesus lots of things. Emmanuel, God with us. We call Jesus our Savior. We call Jesus Holy One. Are you looking in here? <gasps> but we also call Jesus King. Now, I don't know if you know things about kings. I know things about kings. And I don't know if a king fits in there. I can't. I can you know, now, what do you know about a king? If you would describe a king, how would you describe a king? What does a king look like? He has a crown. He has a crown. Okay, so let's say there's a crown. What else does a king usually wear? What? What else does a crown king wears? It's and how would a king, a yeah, circle with it. Like when a king shows up, how would a king show up? 
horses. Horses might draw a, if you've seen a few movies, horses might draw a chariot. Chariot. Let's look in here. Do you see a chariot in here? No. no. I don't see a chariot in there. What does a king usually sit on? A chair. A big chair. Look in here. Do you see a big chair in here? Yes. No. I don't see a big chair in there. Yeah, you'd climb right in there. I would, yeah. No, okay, we're going to have you stand right over here. Now, I don't know about you, but I think about lots of kingly things, like a big fancy banquet. Could you get a banquet table in there? No. I don't think so. When I think about a king, I think about lots of big, like put your, arm, put your arms out here like this. And all big sorts of fancy royal things. And I'm trying to imagine putting all the big fancy royal things in there. I think there's only room for one thing in there. Everybody go like, go like this. Go like this. I think the only thing, oh, you got it, brother. I think the only thing that fings in there is a baby. At least that's the story. Hudson, would you hold my hand? Can you hold my hand for a second? I think the only thing that would fit in there, other than maybe something to feed animals, is a baby. That's the story we know. We know the story about Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the angels and the, look up, what's that? The star. But I don't know about kingly things. I think it's really interesting to imagine the kind of thing, king, that comes down to be in this manger, the story that we know. We have a preacher here today. Our preacher showed up. Can everybody wave at Pastor Craig? Our preacher showed up today, and he's going to tell more of the story today about the kind of king that comes down to be here and what that is. Okay, everybody, let's say a prayer. Can you fold your hands? And we're going to thank God for the king that comes down as a baby. All right. And what that means for us as kids and grown-ups, too. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for coming down to all of us as a baby, the kind of king that's like us and what that means for us. Amen. Now we're going to share the peace. So everybody put your hands out. Look at all of those folks out there. And you remember what we say, the peace of the Lord be with you always. So here we go. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may get up, wander about, share the peace with one another. Thank you for coming up, everybody.
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. The Lord spoke to Isaiah, Isaiah saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol, or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 19. Please read responsively. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let the hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God, hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the gospel. this morning is according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Our gospel is from Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to, to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to, to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, 
and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she was born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to confess right now this morning my sermon is short and to the point. One reason, I'm still working on my Christmas Eve sermon, which is only a couple days away. <laughs> The other piece, though, is because Matthew's story of Christmas is short and to the point. I remember a, a number of years ago when I was in Hill City, uh, we had this, uh, this young teenager, she was one of my high school youth group kids. She would come to our adult ed series every morning after worship. She liked to sit there and listen and learn, and she had some of the most insightful thoughts uh, from time to time. It was hard to believe that she was a freshman in high school because she was asking more intelligent questions than, I, than all of her adult peers combined sometimes. But I remember on this one particular day, she said, Pastor Craig, why didn't Jesus come in the form of majesty and royalty like a normal king? Why didn't God come to us through the powerful? Couldn't he have gotten more work done faster? Fantastic question, Mackenzie. It's a great question. It's a perfect question for this Sunday morning. It's a question I'll probably never forget and always ask myself in the back of my mind. Why didn't God choose to send his only son in the form of majesty and royalty? Someone powerful, someone mighty. However, the gospel this morning, the good news for us this morning, is that God didn't come to us in the most powerful and mighty of ways. For us, it's best that Christ came to us as he did in Matthew's gospel this morning. Matthew is telling a very small part of Jesus' life in our lesson this morning in his own way. For Matthew, he includes two very small verses that tell us that one, Mary is pregnant. And two, that Joseph will take her as his wife and name their son Jesus. Out of all the verses that the prophets spend in declaring that there will be a new hope, a new king, a new savior, it is indeed amazing that the Christmas story really only shares, shares a couple verses in this prophetic promise. It's as though Matthew decided to add his story into his gospel as some like footnote that says, Oh, I should probably say that Christ was actually born before I go on with the rest of my story. It's fascinating. Mark's gospel doesn't even have the Christmas story at all. If you go back and read Mark's gospel, it starts with Jesus as an adult going down to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was flesh, was made flesh. A very prophetic, poetic sort of sense. Luke is the one that, whether you like it or not, come Tuesday night, you will hear Luke. Luke's got the shepherds, and the animals, and the angels, and the wise men, and everyone coming into the story. But in Matthew's story, Matthew's Gospel this morning, it's... Oh, I should probably say that Christ was born, Mary was pregnant, Joseph was about to get rid of her, and Joseph decided, no, I probably shouldn't because an angel appears in the dream, right? How many of you had a dream last night? Some of us remember them, some of us don't. How many of you woke up this morning with this earth-shattering decision you had to make based on that dream? And so is Matthew's gospel. Did Matthew actually forget, though, did he actually forget to expound on the story this morning? I mean, as I said, Luke goes into such great detail, the manger, the animals, the stable, the wise men, and all the rest of the story that we've become so familiar with knowing. Why does Matthew not, see, or not seem to care so much about the details? Again, as I notioned earlier, Matthew doesn't want the glitz and the glamour. Matthew doesn't want to tell us the Christmas story that we know so well. 
Instead, Matthew wants us to know more clearly and more realistically how God is working this Christmas. You see, there were no lights or billboards sharing the Christmas story when Jesus was born, was there? As far as we know. There were no news crews or special news bulletin to interrupt on television, was there? No, last I checked, there wasn't any television. There were no paparazzi, there were no cameras and lights flashing. There wasn't even a baby shower before this night, as far as we know. Instead, God came into this world in the most ordinary of ways through the most ordinary people. God chose Joseph to be Jesus' father on earth, a man who we know is a good man, according to the story. God chose Mary, a virgin, to carry the Christian child, this Christ child, a young woman who isn't even married yet, but a woman who is with a loving man who is willing to let this troubled reality this pregnancy out of wedlock, <coughs> excuse me, still take place in their very ordinary type of lives. Today isn't very unordinary for families who have babies without making the headlines. Were any of you in the front, le- front page of the paper when you were born? I wasn't. I don't think many of us ever were. Today is an unusual for the amazing gift of life <clears throat> to happen to ordinary fathers and ordinary mothers. Today it isn't even unusual for God to send the gift of life into a very chaotic and restless situation such as pregnancy out of wedlock. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I, wow, I am struggling this morning. <clears throat> Allergies, I love it. Today, it isn't even unusual for God to send that gift. And brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to keep this morning's lesson short, as I said, because I still think that it will allow us to keep the Christmas story ordinary, the way Matthew intended it to be. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God chose to come to us in an ordinary way because for many of us, we are ordinary people. Amen? We are ordinary people with ordinary problems. We are ordinary people who make ordinary decisions and live with ordinary consequences. God chose to enter into the world in an ordinary way so that we might one day each become extraordinary through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite those who are able to please stand this morning as our hymn of the day, my favorite one of the time of season, the one that I named my daughter after, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 257. Oh, God.
together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. On, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again to judge the living and, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Worship continues with our offering.
Let us pray. Giver of every good thing, we set before you the gifts you have already given to sustain our lives and to share with others. Help us to be good stewards of the earth and all that is in it, and let our lives be a testimony to the abundant feast you have prepared for all who hunger. Amen. Keeping awake as we watch for Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Hear your church, O oh God, as we pray for all who belong to Jesus Christ, where the church is scorned. Preserve it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear your earth, O oh God, as we pray for its healing and care. Protect the grapevine and the mighty cedar, the mountains and the seas and all that is in them. Give life and all life may call on your name. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear the nations, O oh God, as we pray for those who hold power and authority over people and lands. Help those who create and uphold good laws and those working to reform what is unjust, that the world might better reflect your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear those in need, O oh God, as we pray for all who face uncertainty, refugees and immigrants, those who are imprisoned, and those without work, housing, food, or good health care. Bring good news to all in need of hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear this community of faith, O oh God, as we pray for families and friends who gather in this season, for travelers and hosts, and for those who will work or serve others this Christmas. Let the peace of Emmanuel, God with us, shine in every heart. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear us as we pray for those on our prayer list, especially Barb Buer. We pray for those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Paul Inman. Lord, in your mercy. You hear the cries of our hearts, O oh Lord. Fill us with hopeful expectation that in each day and hour we may love and serve our neighbors. We join our voices together in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures God bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing a carol, Joy to the World. Repeat this. 
Peace, love, and serve the Lord, and Merry Christmas. This concludes the Sunday morning worship service from Lutheran Church in Pierre. Join us for worship each Sunday morning at 9 a.m., Saturday evenings at 5.30 p.m. for our contemporary service, or Wednesdays at 6.15, which includes a meal in our fellowship hall at 5 p.m. If you're unable to attend any of our three worship services, you're invited to tune in, tune in for our live radio broadcast 9 a.m. each Sunday morning here on KGFX 1060 a.m. or 107.1 f.m. Our radio broadcasts rely on the financial support from members of Lutheran Water Church and other regular listeners and viewers. If you'd like to sponsor a broadcast in honor of a special occasion or in memory of a loved one, please contact the church office at 605-224-8608. And remember, this Christmas Eve, candlelight, carols, and communion at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m., 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. That's this Christmas Eve here at Lutheran Water Church. On behalf of Pastor Craig and Deacon Chris Wallman and the entire congregation of Lutheran Oil, we extend our prayers for you and God's care and guidance through this coming week. Merry Christmas to all.